Hello, friends, and welcome back to Cine Club. I have wanted to learn more about a few directors, watch their movies, and really understand the themes and stories they are inclined to tell. So I decided to start a series where I watch all the movies from one director and then make a video about their signature style and traits. And I wanted to start with none other than Hayao Miyazaki. In case you are new to his movies, Hayao Miyazaki is a Japanese director and one of the co-founders of Studio Ghibli, the film and animation studio. By the way, I found out it's pronounced Ghibli in Italian, which refers to a hot, dry southerly wind of North Africa. The idea was that this studio would blow a new wind through the anime industry. But in Japanese, it's pronounced Jiburi, Sutagio Jiburi, the more you know. If you know movies like Princess Mononoke or My Neighbor Totoro, you know Miyazaki. He is internationally acclaimed for being an incredible storyteller and one of the best animator directors. After watching his 11 feature films, I noticed some themes and traits that show up in most of his movies. Let's talk about themes. Miyazaki brings up war quite frequently in his movies, or more his anti-war views. He brings up the First and Second World War in movies like Porco Rosso and The Wind Rises. Maybe it's because he was born at the cusp of World War II and he saw how it affected his country. Whatever the reason, Miyazaki's position against war is evident because none of his protagonists are part of any military. Normally, his antagonists are the ones who are part of an army or any other authoritative institution. We see this in movies like Princess Mononoke, The Wind Rises, Porco Rosso, and Castle in the Sky. The heaviness of war and its repercussions are only exacerbated when in contrast with other themes. For example, magic. One of the greatest things about Miyazaki's movies is that magical element. Magic is recurrent, whether it's a thing the protagonist is trying to protect, like in Howl's Moving Castle, or it can be a very common element everyone in the movie is aware of, like in Kiki's Delivery Service. In other occasions, magic is something only children can see, like in My Neighbor Totoro. It can symbolize a child's innocence or imagination, the place they escape to when faced with other serious situations. In Totoro, Satsuki and Mei are dealing with their mom's illness and the possibility of her death. Throughout the movie, Totoro is a source of happiness and peace for the girls. In Kiki's delivery service, a coming-of-age story, Kiki, a witch, loses her ability to fly, which can mean she's becoming an adult, or worse, she's beginning to doubt herself. Magic is an important part of any of Miyazaki's movies, and I believe one of the reasons why we love them so much. Another theme in his movies is anti-modernism. Miyazaki has an issue with our ever-evolving society, so addicted to technology and its binding chains. You can see most of his movies are set in small villages or in towns by the sea. Miyazaki has a great appreciation for the countryside and nature and displays it as often as possible in his movies. In contrast, he shows cities as an enemy, an ever-growing organism taking over nature. This is one of the biggest plots in Princess Mononoke, the destruction of the magical forest for the industrialization of the land. While not the central theme in Howl's Moving Castle, Howl prefers being away from the kingdom in any overly crowded cities. Even when Sophie goes in search for him, she has to leave her city and head into the fields and mountains to find him and the magic. Miyazaki dreads how humanity destroys nature in favor of economic progress, including globalization and capitalism. Most of his antagonists are looking to annihilate nature in pursuit for political domination, power, and money. That being said, Miyazaki is not opposed to every technological progress, since he loves planes, as you will see in movies like Porco Rosso and The Wind Rises. Attached to this theme, as you can imagine, is environmentalism. Miyazaki often likes to remind us how frail the earth is and what a big part we play in conserving it or destroying it. I think his best movie portraying this message is Princess Mononoke, my personal favorite of all the Ghibli movies. Paired with magic and spirits, Princess Mononoke tells the story of a girl raised by wolves who is fighting against humanity and their mission to destroy the magical forest in order to create more cities and extend their power over the land. We see how the industrialization is poisoning the spirits and turning them into demons. Anything men touch turns ugly. Throughout his movies, Miyazaki tries to let his audience understand how modern technology and ambitions can destroy the true beauty and magic in life. One of his most powerful themes is feminism. Miyazaki is praised for wonderfully complex female characters. He writes self-sufficient women who don't need to be rescued, but find ways to fix the problems they are facing. From very young characters like Ponyo to women who are cursed as old ladies like Sophie, his characters go out to live their lives and make a difference in the world. Sure, they might need a friend, someone who supports them, but they never need a savior. There is also a coming-of-age element in most of his main characters. It happens to characters like Mei and Satsuki and Ponyo, but it is most noticeable in the character of Chihiro in Spirited Away. She went from a sulky child to a brave, innovative young lady who fought for her friend and her parents. 
Another thing I love about his characters is that while they are all independent in their own way, they are not the same. They are motivated by different things. Chihiro's motivation is the safety of her family and going back to the way things were. San, in Princess Mononoke, is motivated by anger and hate. Ponyo is motivated by curiosity. They all face different forces that drive them. You will never find that Miyazaki just duplicates his characters even if you find similar dynamics in most of his movies. Those are some of the main themes you will find in his movies, but you will also find some recurring traits, like his portrayal of family. He always shows family in a positive light. In Kiki's delivery service, her parents are very supportive and want her to be independent from a young age. In Howl's Moving Castle, Sophie finds her family in the odd residence of the castle. In Spirited Away, even though Chihiro is taken away from her parents, she finds a group of people in the bathhouse who treat her like family and quickly become her support group. Friendship and family are very important in Miyazaki's movies, and almost never shown in a bad light. Another thing Miyazaki loves to display is food. I can't figure this one out, but in almost every movie you will find a scene of someone cooking and then eating the food. It's never a passing thing. He always takes the time to show someone enjoying a home-cooked meal. And no matter what, it always looks inviting, even if it's accompanied by loud smacking sounds. And one more thing you will notice is that Miyazaki loves flying. No, seriously, he really loves flying. It's in pretty much every movie. Whether it's on a hydroplane, a broom, a dragon, a floating city, or a flying castle, Miyazaki loves flying. Maybe it symbolizes freedom or independence, or maybe it's another way to show his appreciation of nature, but you can definitely bank on a flying scene or two if you watch one of Miyazaki's movies. That's pretty much all the themes and signature traits I found in Miyazaki's movies. Now, if you're thinking of watching some of his movies, my three favorites are Princess Mononoke, Howl's Moving Castle, and Kiki's Delivery Service. If you want to see his most acclaimed film, you should probably check out Spirited Away. If you're wondering what is the most underrated one, in my opinion, it's Castle in the Sky. Now, if you're wondering which one you should skip, I would say Porco Rosso is just okay and Castle of Cagliostro. It was made before Studio Ghibli and it's super different from most of his stuff. Now, you tell me, what is your favorite Miyazaki film? Which one did you like the least? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you want, you can also let me know on all of social media. If you look for CineClub channel, I will be there and you can leave me a message. But for now, don't forget to click that red button and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and share this video and I will see you on our next movie date.